Welcome back guys. In this episode, I'm going to be experimenting with a new wood finish. One or two or maybe 20 of you have suggested I have a go at mixing some vinegar and wool and making some kind of thing to oxidise or patina wood. Surely it can't work. Now because I don't know what I'm doing, I decided to use YouTube. Turns out I'm not the only one on it. Which explains why nobody's watching me. Anyway, I headed over to a guy called DIY Pete. Now he released a video, it's quite a few years old now, but it was nice, clear and simple. For the first minute that I watched it anyway. But how hard could it be? You basically need a tub. He used a glass one, I'm using an old curry leaves herb powder. Put the pot down. This is a bit basic. Then you add some steel wool. Now, his was in nice little ball things. And he said just add one, but I don't know how much one is. Ah, so strong. So I'm gonna put that in there. Next, over there, you add white distilled vinegar, which I'm hoping is what this stuff is. Now, he said to leave the lid ajar, but I like to knock things over. So I'm gonna put this lid on, but I'm just gonna cut a couple of really bad holes in it. Because this thing actually releases gases as it dissolves. And if you don't put the lid on, I think it goes. <coughs> anyway, is that it? I can't remember how long Pete said to wait. Three days, Pete? I've got a video to get out. Okay, confession time. I may have been distracted by getting a new laser. Link in the description below if you want one. And I may have left this for about three weeks, which is definitely not what DIY Pete told me to do. DIY Pete's mixture was kind of a greyish colour. Mine is not. However, he kind of decanted his and then left it another six or so hours and his turned that color afterwards. In my mind, I've just skipped a step. This stuff smells a bit strange. It's got kind of a vinegary smell to it, but it doesn't smell as acidic as it once did. Give you a close up. In the bottom, there is some residue. So what DIY Pete says to do is to use a paper towel to strain it out. I've got some of this stuff, it's called cheesecloth. I use it for when I cook. That's a lie, I've never used it before, it's brand new. Had to take out the packet. Now, in theory, this should strain out all of those metal bits. Apparently very, very slowly. One single drop at a time. Okay, while we're waiting for that to literally trickle through, I'm gonna talk about the experiment. I've got a piece of beach, I think it is, decking here that was left over from a friend's project. I've got the smallest scrap of oak in the world. But the one I'm really interested in is pine. There is no good finish for pine other than painting it. They all look artificial and I just don't like the yellowing that happens over time. But it's cheap, so I use it. So I'm gonna use just this old block. It's got a load of, I think it was a stretcher for a pallet at one point, but it's got a load of nail holes in. It's not much good for anything other than our experiment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape a line halfway down these two pieces. So we've got kind of a before and after. This one I'm going to segment into three because with the ebonizing of wood, it works more effectively if there's more tannins in the wood. 
Oak has got a lot of tannins, so there should be a big impact there. No idea about beech. Pine, fairly low on tannins. But I've been told that if you paint some tea, which I've got here, black tea, disgusting. If you paint some tea on it first, let it dry, and then apply the ebonizing stain, it has a bit more of an impact. Who knows? Progress update. It's been five minutes. Anyway, while I'm waiting for that, I've got my pieces taped up. I'm just going to take my tea solution, and I think you just brush it on. Apparently this brings out the tannins in the wood, which further then react with that ebonizing stain. Don't know. Pete didn't say to do this. One of Pete's commenters did. I don't really know how much to put on. That'll do. Still not finished. I'll bring you back when I've got something to do. Could tidy the garage. <laughs> That'd be stupid. So I was patient and did some more waiting. The tea stain on this has kind of just made it a bit orangey, really. It's certainly not something I'd recommend if you're wanting to get rid of the look of pine. I moved the tape around a little bit because I thought, we well, you know what pine looks like. I'd rather have a bigger section of the finished product. So I'm going to start on the beach first because I don't know what's going to happen. In terms of the liquid, it has gone a cloudy, ambery, coppery, well, rusty colour, that's what it's gone. So, the idea is, you shouldn't need much of this. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like on this beach, but I had it lying round, and it's good for nothing on its own as a single piece. So I'm going to try it out. Now, the oak, I've heard you have more interesting results with oak. So I'm interested to see what this is going to look like. Granted, it's the smallest piece of oak in the world, but I am a poor woodworker money wise and skill wise so i'll leave that there then this is everybody's least favorite material pine but everybody's most popular material because it's cheap this is the one i'm intrigued about now the good thing is there's enough of this stain here to last a lifetime by the looks of it whoa instantly reacted with that tea Look at it, you can see it change in a matter of seconds. Now, whether I like the gray look or not, I don't know. But that's pretty cool to watch. So that's with the T. And then this is just gonna be just the ebonizing finish. Nothing else other than straight pine vinegar and wire wool. I've just looked at the oak as well. That seems to be greying up massively and the grain on this has just gone dark in seconds. I assumed you'd have to leave this to dry for a like, couple of hours before you saw anything. But it's instantly having an effect this oak is transforming into like a, a piece of oak that's been left out for three or four years in the weather without having to leave it out for three or four years in the weather. Now I'm going to be patient. I'm going to put a lid on this and I'm going to leave it for an hour to fully dry. It's nice and warm today. It's about 22 degrees. So in an hour we'll come back and we'll see just how much these have transformed. That tea effect is mental though. Unbelievable. I've been patient. I will warn you, I left these outside and it just started to spit, so there's a couple of droplet marks on, but ignore that. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting this. So this is the beach. I think it's beach. It has gone a really cool colour. It's something about the grey and the brown blending together. I absolutely love that. I mean, I haven't got any more of this, but if I did, I'd be using this for something. Very impressed with that. The oak has gone a really weathered look. At first it looked like it was going all moldy, 
and it was really dark and not very attractive. But now it's, I think they call it silvering. But I really like the look of that. It's a real grey colour, so you do lose the look of oak, but keep the grain. And the grain has gone almost red. But that's pretty cool. The pine, uh, I don't think it's a winner. So we've got the original pine there. It's just white wood. This has gone almost an amberish colour. I don't know what it would go with. I don't know how I would use that for anything within my house anyway. This side though, this looks identical to pallet boards that have just been left out in the rain. I'll give you a close up. It's got a complete weathered look to it. It's really greyed off. It looks like it's been left out, but you don't get the blistering of the wood that happens with the weathering. You don't get the raising of the grain or anything like that. So if you like the outdoor look of pine, but don't necessarily want the rough texture of the wood, then this is for you. Honestly, I don't know what I'm going to use this for. I was hoping to have a bit of a different result with the pine, but I've got what I've got. More than anything, it's been a pretty cool experiment. And if you're looking to build outdoor furniture out of pine that you're not wanting to last a lifetime, maybe it's only out in the summer, gets brought in in the winter, this might be just for you. Maybe it's just what you want. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.